Welcome to the physics section of Pre-Med HQ's MCAT prep course. My name is Dave Carlson and I'll be your instructor for this section. We'll start out with an introduction that goes through a lot of the core physics formulas that you'll be responsible for on the MCAT. But rather than just requiring rote memorization for all of these, what I've done here is I've laid out a flowchart that can help you relate these formulas to each other to help give you a better sense of context. And later on, we'll be relating this to all of the major core SI units that we'll be using, and also using this flowchart to help us understand some of the most common graphs that you'll encounter in the physics section of the MCAT. So we'll start out with X or position. You may at times see this listed as D or distance. And if you take the change in position over time, that gives you velocity. Taking the change in velocity over time gives you acceleration, and those are two of the fundamental qualities that we've learned about physics before. Now if you multiply mass times velocity, that gives you momentum. And if you multiply mass times acceleration, that gives you force. F equals ma is one of the most famous equations in physics. If you take force and multiply that by distance, that is one way of finding work, which is a type of energy. And if you look at the change in work over time, that gives you power. Power relates not only to mechanics and kinematics type equations, but also relates to electricity and electrical power that's generated by resistors, for example. So this is a point that allows us to connect electricity with mechanical problems, and so power is a very important thing to be comfortable with. You can also look at power as the change in energy over time. That's another way that power can be described. Now, these are some of the less common formulas that you'll encounter, but they will definitely be very relevant for the MCAT. The change in momentum is equal to the impulse. So impulse, which is listed here as J, is equal to the change in momentum created by some object. It could be a ball that's bouncing off of a wall. It could be a baseball bat that is hitting something. But whenever you see a change of momentum, that tells you that you're working with impulse. An impulse can also be represented as force times the difference in time. So impulse is something that's useful to understand when you're dealing with nets or padding or anything that lengthens the time of a collision so that the force of that collision is less. So anytime you have pads, anytime you have nets or anything that softens a blow or softens a fall, impulse is what you're dealing with. Impulse and impact are a good way to think of those. You'll do quite well if you can commit this chart to memory and understand some of its nuances. For example, notice that moving from force to power, you multiply by distance and then divide it by time. Now, remember that distance and displacement are not the same thing, but oftentimes they will be listed as the same thing if the movement is in a straight line. And if you have distance over time, that is velocity, and so force times velocity can give you another way of getting to power. That's a formula you may encounter. Power equals force times velocity. Also realize that this chart works backwards as well. For example, if you know the power that is created by something and you have the power working over a certain period of time, whereas we went from work to power by dividing by time, we can go back this way by multiplying by time. Power times time will give you the amount of work that is performed. And if you know the amount of work performed and the distance that's provided, if you divide that work by distance, that will get you back to force. And so be comfortable working with this chart, going back and forth, and relating all of these formulas to each other so they're no longer just abstract concepts, but instead things that allow you to really understand physics and how different pieces relate to each other. And now we'll get into various units. Now, the unit strategy isn't for everybody, but a lot of students find it fairly helpful to use units to help solve physics problems for two reasons. One is if you know the units that the answer is expressed in, then that helps you figure out how to better conduct that problem and what path you should take to get toward the answer. The other thing is if you ever blank on one of the formulas, knowing the units inside and out can be quite helpful in figuring out how these formulas work and what the exact formula is.
The nice thing about this chart is that it makes it really easy to figure out all the different units and how they relate to each other. So we start with position, which is usually listed in meters. And to get from position to velocity, we just divide by time. And that gives us the unit of velocity, which is meters per second. From there, we divide velocity by time, and we get to acceleration, which is meters per second squared. Now, notice that the SI unit for mass is the kilogram, and acceleration is meters per second squared. That, when you multiply those two together, it gives you kilogram meters per second squared, which is equal to the Newton, which is your SI unit for force. Force times distance will give you work, and a joule is essentially a Newton meter. Remember that work is a form of energy, and all forms of energy are measured in joules. And joules are simply Newton meters. Dividing joules by second is what we do here. We take work, divide that by time, and that gives us power. And power is measured in watts, which are joules per second. These other units don't have SI units attached to them, but they are easy to derive just by looking at the modifications we're making. Here, to get to momentum, we're just multiplying kilograms by meters per second. And so the unit of momentum is simply the kilogram meter per second. And so this chart helps you easily derive all of the major units that you'll be using for mechanics problems. The last thing before we move on to how to use this chart to help analyze some graphs is that oftentimes it's the impulse and momentum formulas that cause students the most trouble. And I found a fairly simple way to just commit this to memory. It involves changing, instead of using the unit J for impulse, instead just to use a capital I. And instead of using P for momentum, you just use a capital M. And then this makes it really easy to remember the impulse formulas. Just think of an impulse eater, someone who eats on impulse. Eventually, they'll end up saying, I am fat. And that gives you the impulse formulas there. I equals delta M and also equals F delta T. And that's a really, really straightforward way to remember the impulse formulas if those are causing you trouble. And that should now enable you to be able to produce this entire chart from memory.